We all know that you've been investigated for corruption everywhere you've gone. City, state, even Barack Obama's Department of Justice investigated you. You've achieved the rare trifecta of corruption investigations. Is that really what we want in the next mayor? Do you think you're going to enter, enter City Hall and it's going to be different? We all know it's going to be exactly the same. That's why so many people on the stage don't want you to be mayor. Like everywhere you've gone, Eric, people look and see that you don't pay attention to the rules of the road. You're unprincipled. You know, like you actually advised New Yorkers last summer to go confront their neighbors over illicit fireworks and a woman followed your advice, Shatavia Walls, and she lost her life. A few years later. It is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so, these charges will be entirely false based on lies. But they would not be surprising. I always knew that if I stood my ground for all of you, that I would be a target. And a target I became. For months, leaks and rumors have been aimed at me in an attempt to undermine my credibility and paint me as guilty. Despite our pleas, when the federal government did nothing as its broken immigration policies overloaded our shelter system with no relief, I put the people of New York before party and politics. Now, if I am charged, many may say I should resign because I cannot manage the city while fighting the case. I can also understand how everyday New Yorkers will be concerned that I cannot do my job while I face accusation. But I have been facing these lies for months since I began to speak out for all of you and their investigation started. Yet the city has continued to improve. Make no mistake, you elected me to lead this city and lead it, I will. Today we're talking about the mayor of New York City being indicted. You know what indictment means. That means they have enough evidence to take it to trial. It's no longer an investigation. They have done the investigation and now they find something that they can align something to something else, right? And they can go ahead and take that to trial and, and this is looking like a serious case. And it's ironic that while this serious case is about to start to jump off, he's going to be in court tomorrow. That they are already, and I'm talking about the Democrats, already starting to eat their own. Calling for his resignation. Talking crazy about the man. And it's so ironic because you would think that they would stand behind the black man, right? They're all about that, right? They're all about the injustices that they see in this world and all that, right? But now they're already like, nah, nah, nah. This looks ugly. You need to get out of here. Ironic. Just in case you don't know what's going on and you haven't been seeing what's happening, let me go ahead and fill you in. CBS News New York, but it remains sealed, so it's unclear what charges Adams will face. It does make him the first sitting mayor in New York City history to be indicted. Tonight we have live pictures outside City Hall there on the left and Gracie Mansion on the right. Relatively quiet at the moment, but a different scene expected in the coming days in both venues when the mayor will have to enter a plea to the charges. We have team coverage here for you tonight at 11. Political reporter Marsha Kramer has been working this story all night. Let's begin with Ali Bauman live outside Gracie Mansion tonight. Ali, what's the scene there? Well, Christina Morris in a taped video message sent through his attorney tonight. Mayor Adams is maintaining his innocence, though he doesn't specify what exactly he's being charged with. Adams said that he's been fighting injustices throughout his life and vowed to fight what he calls these injustices with every ounce of his strength and spirit. Over the last few months, federal investigators have raided the homes and seized electronics from the mayor and many in his inner circle, including former NYPD Commissioner Edward Caban, who stepped down earlier this month. So there's a traffic jam of investigations, subpoenas, searches, devices being seen. But this is the first thing we've seen that will actually result, we are told, in a charge being brought forth tomorrow. 
Earlier Wednesday, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez became the most prominent Democrat to call for the mayor to resign, posting on social media, the flood of resignations and vacancies are threatening government function. For the good of the city, he should resign. Adam shot back, penning in part for anyone who self-righteously claims people charged with serious crime should not be in jail to now say that the second black mayor of New York should resign because of rumors and innuendo is the height of hypocrisy. So look, you saw that? You heard that? It's real. Back up. What's wild about it is even CNN, the Democrats' friend, is at it again. Burning their own, eating their own, and already kind of giving the assumption of that it must be a certain, like an open and shut case. There's no way that this could be possibly an injustice. There's no way that I'm just, it's just crazy to me. Right? We've all seen injustices happen, and they're already talking about him as if it's only one way that he could be bringing this case up. There's only one way that they could be coming and taking the sitting mayor to trial. Right? Check it out. I mean, that just, that in and of itself is remarkable that you're even saying that we'll see the, the yep. mayor of New York City in a courtroom tomorrow as this indictment is being unsealed, which I should note, he gave a statement to the New York Times tonight and said, and I'm quoting him now, I always knew that if I stood my ground for New Yorkers that I would be a target and a target I became. If I am charged, I am innocent and I will fight this with every ounce of my strength and spirit. Sure. And to your point, Caitlin, not, not only will we see Eric Adams, the sitting mayor, in a courtroom tomorrow in Lower Manhattan, we will see him sitting at the defendant's table with his criminal defense lawyers by his side, and he will enter a plea of not guilty. He will be advised of the charges against him in the indictment. As to his claim that he's being targeted because he's the mayor, uh, New York City has had mayors for hundreds and hundreds of years, of course. He is the first one to be charged while sitting in office. So uh, that is sounds that like true? a stretch to me. Is that true? He's the first one to ever be charged while sitting in office? He's the first He's the first sitting mayor to be charged in New York City in the history of the city. And, Caitlin, by the way, one thing I should add here. The Southern District of New York, the office that's prosecuting this, federal prosecutors, has a long history of prosecuting corruption crimes in the city and the state of New York. Just within the last several years, the SDNY has, has successfully prosecuted the top Democrat in the New York State Assembly, Sheldon Silver, and the top Republican in the New York State Senate, a guy named Dean Skello. So the Southern District of New York knows how to do these corruption cases. They usually have them buttoned up by the time they get to this point of an indictment. Well, walk us through what this looks like if you are a prosecutor in the Southern District of New York and you're leading up to this. Uh, obviously, you know, prosecutors should use discretion with every every indictment that they bring. But but to indict a sitting mayor of New York City, which, as you noted, has never happened in the history of New York City. I mean, what is the bar like for something like that? Um, I'm going to put this real unscientifically for you. If you're going to charge the sitting mayor of New York City, you better be damn sure that you have the evidence on him, because if you don't, it will be a disaster. Now, look, as John Miller laid out, there were a lot of indicators, not so subtle indicators over the last several months pointing in this direction, a series of subpoenas, search warrants, charges of other people around the mayor. But the big question that we now have an answer to is, were prosecutors going to be able to link all that to the top guy, to the mayor? It does happen sometimes that you're investigating a case and you have a lot of smoke around an individual, but you can't necessarily tie the key player, the boss, the mayor, whoever it may be, into that criminality. But we now know that the SDNY does believe it can do that and ultimately prove it beyond a reasonable doubt to a unanimous jury, by the way, of New Yorkers, of a jury pool that will be drawn from Manhattan and the Bronx and the other northern counties. So, man, they better be darn sure in, in this charge if they're going to bring it. In the end of the day, I have to say that it's ironic, honestly, that he's facing trial for corruption and these types of tr uh, charges in New York City. Shortly after, they just tried to put all their resources behind taking down Donald Trump. It's ironic to me that they are going at their mayor right who has been standing up saying the the democrats were wrong on this immigration policy that they have failed with the immigration policy that and, and now he started to fight back due to the fact of the over uh the over, i want to say the influx right the overpopulation of the immigrants in their city in their state and uh, well in particular the city 
and taking all the resources and doing all the crime and things of that nature that that they've been fighting so hard against that this happens. I don't necessarily think one has to do one thing has to do with the other, but I just think that it's an ironic timing. It's it's a strange situation that has taken place. And it's even more strange that the Democrats are turning on him in such a way, expecting his resignation instead of standing behind the man that they have elected and that they support and that they say is a great mayor and all this kind of stuff until he isn't, right? And everything's all good until it's not. And I guess now it's not. And there's nobody going to stand there and say, hey, let's, let's at least give the man the benefit of a doubt. Or we, do we have to defend him? On the Republican side to say, hey, give the man a benefit of a doubt. It's so crazy to me in this day and time that all it takes is just a couple of charges and you're already guilty in the public eye or the uh, court of public opinion. Puffy's already a meme and already guilty. And they actually, in the Puffy case, don't even have a real, real strong case from what I've seen. It's a lot of allegations about freak parties and a lot of this and a lot of that. But it seems more like he flew out some girls and stuff. But that's a whole other thing. We're not going to get into all that. But what I'm saying is, my point is that it's ironic that you are so guilty in the media, court of public opinion, everybody's eyes before you even arrive to the courthouse. That's crazy to me. And you would think that the Democrats, who are supposed to be so social justice warrior, so about so fighting the black man injustice, right, that they would be the first ones on the front line. Like, nah, we're going to ride with our brother. We're going to support him. We know this man, this man is good, and we're going to wait to see what happens, not just judge him before we see what happens. Nonetheless, let the monster eat the monster, right? But I just wanted to bring it to you guys' attention, man, and show y'all what's going on, man. And until next time, y'all be the cool kids, and I'll catch all y'all cool kids at the cool table. Deuces.